الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعض Brother Chairman, respected uh, members of the management committee, and brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our subject is one which is not just important. It is also one of critical importance. There are those who consider their supreme objective in life and their supreme loyalty to be holding on to their job and getting their promotion. <laughs> But there are others who believe that their faith is the most important thing in their lives. And such people would want to sacrifice whatever, whatever they have to sacrifice in order to preserve their faith. We live in a world today where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now testing us and he is testing us with the greatest tests and trials ever in history no people ever before no people had to face the tests and trials that we now face These tests and trials are of such a nature that reason alone, the rational faculty, the capacity to think is not enough. No. We have to be a people who see with two eyes in order to be able to see and recognize the world today. But most people see with only one eye. <laughs> they see with only the external eye. They are internally blind. They may have a PhD from MIT, but yet they are internally blind. The heart can see, but they don't teach that at universities, no. The heart can see what these eyes cannot see. The heart can penetrate beyond the external appearance to reach the internal reality of things but that would be possible only when there is faith in the heart and when there is faith or iman in the heart then Allah puts into the heart nur you cannot buy that noor in the stock market. It's not on sale. The government of Malaysia cannot give you that noor. No. <laughs> Only Allah gives that noor. And when Allah puts noor in the heart, then with these two eyes, the external and the internal, we will be able to read the world today correctly. Otherwise, we can be deceived, 
For example, those who see with one eye, they say we live in the best of all worlds. This is the best world ever. There has never been a better world than this. In this age, for example, we have electricity. Yesterday, they used the oil lamp. In this age, we have the motor car. Yesterday, they used the donkey car. In this age, we have the telephone, something that you are familiar with in this company. And yesterday, they used to use birds, pigeons, to take messages. In this age, we have, we have uh, the toilets in the home because we have sewage systems and yesterday you had to go outside of the home and so the evidence keeps on mounting who wants to go back to yesterday this is the best of all worlds those on the other hand who see with two eyes they say but wait a minute can this be the best of all worlds when those who are ruling the world and getting all of mankind to become carbon copies of themselves huh? that anything they do they make all of mankind follow them. This civilization which today dominates the whole world is now moving to get all of mankind to agree. Every government eventually will have to accept that it is legally permissible for a man to marry another man. Hmm? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? That's progress, eh? <laughs> That's progress. And get a marriage certificate. And for a woman to marry another woman. And get a marriage certificate. We say no. This doesn't look like the best of all worlds at all. This looks like the worst of all worlds. The, the difference between appearance and reality is remarkable. Yesterday we lived in a world in which, yes, there were people who were rich and there were others who were poor, of course, but we never knew, we never knew an economy. No, not ever, not ever in history in which the rich were permanently rich. And which the poor, in which the poor were imprisoned in permanent poverty and destitution. This is the first time in human history. We say this is not progress. We always used money all through history. And the money that we used was money which had its value inside the money. So it was money with intrinsic value so if somebody wanted to rob you they had to come at you and take the money from you 
by fighting you. Huh? That's the only way they could take your money. But now we live in a world in which they can rob us, take away our wealth, without ever having to put their hands in our pockets. Yes? And they have reduced Indonesia today to slavery. And they have re reduced Bangladesh to slavery. And Egypt to slavery. It is not by accident that Indonesia is so poor today. If you believe that Indonesia is poor because the Indonesians don't work, huh? then you should buy a one-way ticket to the moon and go and stay there. You don't belong to here. <laughs> no, 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 no. There is a monetary system in the world today and I know that subject because I have studied international monetary economics at two universities. I know the subject. We have a system of money in the world today which is being used to rip off mankind as a consequence of which one part of the world today is in slavery and another part of the world are the slave masters. Welcome brothers and sisters, sons and daughters to our subject of signs of the last day. No one knows when the world is going to end. Not even your CEO of this company. Nobody knows. When the world comes to an end, it will happen suddenly. Two people will be sitting with a cloth between them engaged in a business transaction and the world will end before they could complete their discussion. A man would take his horse for water and the world will end before the horse can drink the water. Someone will take a seed of durian to eat the durian. My wife loves durian. She's somewhere in the back there. And the world will end before the durian could reach your lips. Said the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. When that end of the world comes, it will be sudden. And then you see the mountains like pieces of cotton wool. Huh? And then you see the graves of people and their bodies being pitched out of the graves. And then there will be a transformation of the entire world into something which is new. So if this is a world of space and of time, that would be something which would be different. But we are not concerned with the end of the world. No. We are concerned with an age which will come before the end of the world. And we have chosen to call this the end of history. That in this end of history, truth must triumph over all rivals. Justice must prevail in the world. 
the Security Council of the United Nations, that bunch of crooks could do what they want. Governments could stamp their feet and jump however they want. But justice will prevail in the world. And the oppressor will bite the dust in the end of history. This is there in the Quran where Allah says, فَعَدَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ Rasulahu bil huda wadin al haq he it is who has sent his messenger with guidance this is guidance not the stuff you get in the new straight times this is guidance the quran and the religion of truth li yudhhirahu ala ad-din kulli that this religion of truth might prevail over all rivals. History cannot end without this taking place. However, there is going to be an age which will precede that end of history, culminate with that end of history. And it is called, and you are familiar with this term in Malaysia, it is called Akhirul Zaman. But for some strange reason, I don't know why you say Akhirul Zaman. Tell me why. It's Akhirul Zaman. And Ilmu Akhirul Zaman in the English language is called Islamic, now don't be afraid, it's a big word now. It's called Islamic eschatology. I told you the big word. It is Ilm Akhirul Zaman. When Akhirul Zaman comes, then you're going to face the greatest of all tests and trials. And nearly all of mankind are going to fail. Very few will pass this test. And all those who fail will go into the hellfire, Jahannam. But Allah's Messenger said that there will be some signs by which you can recognize that you are living in Akhirul Zaman. And that is the topic of our lecture this afternoon. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam had performed the Hajj. And revelation came down announcing, This day have I perfected for you your religion, completed my favor unto you. And then he left Mecca and returned to Medina. And now there are only about 81 days left in his blessed life. It is at this time that the angel came. The angel came in the form of a human being. The angel came into the masjid, Jibra'il alayhi salam. And the angel asked five questions. And of course, you're all familiar with the five questions. What is Islam? What is Iman? What is Ihsan? When will the last hour come? And what are the signs of the last hour. He gave two signs and I want to share them with you today. The first one, very easy to recognize. You just take a taxi and tell him I want to go to KLCC. 
and you'll see it. He said that you will find the naked, barefooted shepherds, people who take care of goats and sheep. You will find the naked, barefooted shepherds competing with each other in the construction of tall buildings. In other words, you have to be blind not to see <laughs> that you are living in Akhiru Zaman. Huh? If you do not have tall buildings in your city, you are considered to be backward. And so in Akhiru Zaman, mankind will measure progress. The height of buildings. The taller the building, the more have we progressed as a society. Hmm? And people who think that way and are proud of their tall buildings, <laughs> Nabi Muhammad is saying to them, that you have the brains, you have the intellectual acumen of naked barefooted shepherds, which is polite language. I could use harsher language than that. All around the world today, the skyscrapers of Manhattan are being replicated. Every city and every town now has its little Manhattan skyscrapers, including your Kuala Lumpur. And so here is a sign of the last day which should function as a wake-up call. But there are those who are so asleep nothing will wake them up. No. They have eyes and yet they cannot see. They have ears and yet they cannot hear. They have hearts and yet they do not understand. Allah says of such people, Ula'ika kal'am, Ula'ika kal'am, they're just like cattle. They're just like cattle. So what can you do for them? Whether you want them or you don't want them, they don't bother with you. So let us now turn to the other people who when they see the tall buildings, they will shake. They will shiver. They will say, this is what Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam talked about. And I'm seeing it with my eyes. I now live in the most dangerous of all worlds. But he spoke about his second sign as well. He said that a slave woman, oh, oh, so in Akhirul Zaman, there's going to be slavery. We don't have slavery behind us alone, we have slavery in front of us. In Akhirul Zaman, there's going to be slavery. He said, a slave woman will give birth to her mistress. We don't have the time today to explain this hadith, but we've done it 
in uh, one of our previous lectures and I have a very dear friend now I must introduce you to my friend my friend is called YouTube <laughs> and this friend of mine uh, broadcasts my lectures sometimes within hours of my giving the lecture right here you sit him sitting there and then in France they can sit down and listen to the lecture and now in France they're asking for French subtitles so you will find on YouTube a lecture in which I've explained this subject an Islamic response to Dajjal's modern Western feminist revolution hmm? but the slavery of which the Prophet spoke alayhi salatu wasalam is already here and it is here because of something called riba riba is not only borrowing and lending money on interest but riba is also every ripoff and of course the biggest ripoff to have ever occurred in human history is the one involving bogus fraudulent and haram paper money and the money which is coming now because paper money is on its way out the US dollar when last I heard about it is in a special part of a hospital called ICU you heard about ICU in fact I believe the US dollar is already dead but they have a life support machine keeping it alive and it will only be a matter of time before the US dollar is demonetized meaning you cannot use the US dollar in the United States for buying and for selling no you can use it as wallpaper and then they will replace the US dollar with some other currency maybe a coin which will be worth five cents to the dollar of course China is going to be very angry with that eh? because the Chinese have a whole pile of US dollars and the Saudis are going to be very angry eh? they have a whole pile of US dollars so now you lose 95 percent of your wealth hmm? but what is replacing paper money now is something even worse it is money you cannot see it is money you cannot touch it is electronic money and you make this money by simply typing it in and typing it out so whoever controls the banking system around the world controls the world we are heading towards the financial Guantanamo this is slavery economic slavery and it has already come to the world and now the news is tightening around the neck who is doing it I now want to introduce you to the most important part of this subject and that's all I can do today introduce you you want me to teach the subject you have to read my books if you read Jerusalem in the Quran which I wrote uh, 10 years ago and this cover design was done right here in Malaysia this book will introduce you to the subject of Akhiru Zaman and we also have the book in Bahasa but we only have about 20 copies today the companions of the Prophet والسلام, were sitting talking amongst themselves when he came and he asked what are you talking about and they said we are talking about 
the signs of the last day. And then he said, and this hadith is in Sahih Bukhari, it is in Sahih Muslim. He said the last day would not come until, and he mentioned, ten signs. Ten signs. The ten were not given in the order in which they will occur. We do not know that order. So we're giving you the ten in a random way. Number one, Dajjal. Number two, Ya'juj and Ma'juj, or Gog and Magog. And this is the last book that I've written, an Islamic view of Gog and Magog in the modern world. Number three, the return of the son of Mary, Nabi Isa alayhi salam. Number four, Dukhan, smoke. It is my opinion, and you must never accept my opinion, never, until you are convinced that it is correct. It is my opinion that this Dukhan is probably about 20 or 25 years away from now. Hmm? When the clash of Gog and Magog will take place, it will be nuclear war with thousands of nuclear weapons being used. On the one side you'll have Russia and her allies, and on the other side you have America and her allies. The Gog and Magog clash will take place with all these thousands of nuclear weapons being used and it is, you know, a nuclear bomb produces a mushroom cloud so can you imagine what's going to happen when thousands of nuclear weapons are used? Hmm? there is a verse in the Quran which relates to this in Surah Al-Isra, which is also known as Surah to bani Israel, I think that my lecture is a little bit boring because some people are falling asleep. Huh? If you see anybody sleeping, wake them up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, listen to the verse, Ba'da'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajeem وَإِن مِّن قَرِيَةٍ إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُهْلِكُوهَا قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُوهَا عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا كَانَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَسْتُورًا And not a single town or city will escape. Allah is going to destroy every town and every city. And those which escape destruction will be punished with terrible punishment. And my opinion is that you've got about 20-25 years left. Of course, I can be wrong. When that clash takes place of Gog and Magog, that's it. The only ones which will, who will survive would be those who are in the remote countryside. And you know that you are in the remote countryside when you cannot use a cell phone. So that is number four, Dukhad, smoke. Number five, Dabbatul Ab, a beast or a creature of the Ard. Ard can mean earth. Ard can mean the material universe. Ard can mean land. Ard can mean territory. Hmm? In the context in which this appears, my opinion is that it refers to Al Ardul Muqaddasa, the Holy Land that a beast will appear in the Holy Land. The Quran tells us about that beast and you know the 
punctuation in the Quran did not come from Allah. No. They would, the Prophet والسلام, would, would recite the ayah and the scribes would write it down. But when they wrote it down, they didn't put in punctuation. So this is one word which can have two possible meanings. That the beast would to kalimuhum, speak to them, or taklimuhum, wound them. My understanding is the second meaning is more appropriate. And so I have come to, con to the conclusion that this state of Israel today is the beast of the up. But Allah knows best. Number six, that the sun would rise from the west. My methodology of study is that the Quran is the only supreme authentic authority in Islam. And, and no hadith has absolute authenticity. And therefore the Quran sits in judgment over the hadith. Hadith cannot change the Quran. No. The Quran tells us that the sun rises from the east. I believe it does in KL, does it? From the east? Right. Good. And the sun sets in the west. The Quran tells us that. And the Quran also tells us La tabdila li khalkillah That Allah's creation does not change Therefore I have come to the conclusion That the sun cannot physically rise from the west No Because that would be in conflict with the Quran. But you would be surprised at the number of emails I'm getting from all over the world. Sheikh, there's something called reverse magnetic theory or something like that or the other. And, and the sun is actually going to rise from the west. Or oh, they're not giving me any peace at all. Therefore, I have to understand the sun rising from the west to be something which is symbolic. There is going to be a false sunrise. That false sunrise will come from the west. It is not the true sunrise. This false sunrise wants to replace the true sunrise. And so I have perceived that false sunrise to be modern Western secular civilization. But this is my opinion. Do not accept my opinion unless you are convinced that it is correct. Number seven, eight, and nine. That there will be three khusuf, plural of khas. A khas is a movement of the earth, which is normally called an earthquake. But this movement of the earth would result in a sinking down of the earth. One would be in the east, the second would be in the west and the third you know I was here a few years ago and in Tamansuri UK it, it was Ramadan the people you didn't hear about it? they, they had woken up in the morning for the Sahri and the whole house the whole house went down you didn't hear about that? Tamansuri UK. <laughs> so one in the east, one in the west, and the third one in Arabia. 
And that third one in Arabia, that is the one who will, which will confirm that this is Imam al-Mahdi. Not the eclipse of the sun and the moon, no, no. This is the one, the sinking down of the earth in Arabia. And number 10, that a fire will come out of Yemen. I don't understand this to be a literal fire. I understand this to be a revolutionary fire. Hmm? You remember 1990? Some of you may have been born already. 1990? Huh? When, uh, when uh, Saddam Hussein sent his troops into Kuwait huh? and took over Kuwait, remember? Oh my, you should have seen the Malay people, they were all celebrating. Yes, the Malay were very happy. And all the Malay were supporting Saddam. In Singapore as well, giving headache to the Singapore government. Because they detested Kuwait. They detested Kuwait. And the Yemeni people, there were about 8 million of them working in Saudi Arabia. And the Yemeni people all applauded and they supported Saddam Hussein. So when Bush Senior sent what he called a desert storm and pushed this Iraqi army out of Kuwait, Saudi Arabia then retaliated against those 8 million Yemenis and threw them out of the country. <laughs> so the heart of Yemen is anti-systemic. Hmm? The heart of Yemen despises the oppressor. And this is why the Prophet said, Allahumma barik lana fi shamina wa yamanina. O oh Allah, grant blessings for us in our Sham, Syria, and our Yemen. I wish he had included Indonesia as well. And so a fire will come out of Yemen and drive mankind to the place of assembly, which is Arafat. And so that spells goodbye to Saudi Arabia. Hmm? These are the ten major signs of the last day. And I want, I don't have the time now. Each one of these will take some time to explain. Each one of these. I'm writing a book on Dajjal now. And I hope I can complete that book while I'm here in Malaysia. I've already written this book on Gog and Magog. It's the only book in the market in the modern age. The only one. Uh, but you should now, because of today's lecture, and because you have been to KLCC, don't tell me you've not been to KLCC, and you've seen the tall buildings. Today's lecture is a wake-up call that you must study the subject of signs of the last day and that you have to concentrate your study on the major signs, the ten major signs. This book is entitled Signs of the Last Day in the Modern Age and in this book there is a collection of essays dealing with this subject. Now, apart from the major signs let me share with you some of the other signs and then we'll end. Okay, you have to have your lunch. I don't know how tasty your lunch is going to be now but I have to tell you. He said sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He said in the last age a woman will dress 
like men. I hope you don't, don't get angry with me. Women will dress like men. So you will see her in a jacket, cut masculine style jacket. And you will see her wearing trousers. And I have seen her with a tie in McDonald's. The tie. And this is the working woman's clothes. Hmm? When you see that, tears should come in your eyes. That 1400 years ago, our prophet, in the desert of Arabia, he said that this will happen. Why is she dressed like a man? Answer, so that she can assume the functional role of men in society. Hmm? So now she gets dressed and goes to work and faces the morning traffic and she works all day and then she comes back home in the evening with her briefcase. Don't be annoyed with me. I have a job to do. And faces the evening traffic and advances in her career. When she is at work, she's an officer. She has men working under her. So she can't talk to them in a feminine voice. Her voice has to be masculine. Huh? So her voice becomes masculine. If you hear her on the telephone, you won't know, is it a man or a woman? And as her voice becomes masculine, and her work is masculine, oh my gosh, you should see her face. The face of a woman is soft and gentle, beautiful. No man here will differ with me that the most beautiful thing that Allah has ever created is a woman. Come on, tell me. <laughs> huh? But now she loses her femininity. And as she becomes more and more masculine, because she is dressing like a man, eventually men are no longer attracted to her. And so now the, the day will get married to the day. And get a marriage certificate. And the night will marry the night and get a marriage certificate. He said it 1400 years ago. Now when she goes to work, morning to evening, plenty traffic in KL. Who is going to take care of the children? And that's the problem, eh? Because if you don't have any children, he can look for another woman. Yeah, if you don't have any children, you can look for another woman. So, who is going to take care of the children? Answer? Oh, put the children in a daycare center. So I went to the daycare center. I spoke to the baby, only six weeks old. Eh? And a miracle occurred and the baby spoke to me. And I asked the baby, baby, do you prefer the daycare center or mommy? And the baby said, prefer mommy. Oh, I see. So mommy is violating your right as a baby. And mommy is neglecting you. Well, the consequences of an evil deed is an evil result. So when the baby grows up, Guess what the baby does with mommy? They put mama in a junkyard of human beings. You know junkyard? When the motor car can't roll anymore, <laughs> you put the motor car in a junkyard. Huh? So this is a nursing home, home for old people. So I went there and I saw her on a rocking chair. I said, mama, Mama, can you hear me? 
Mama, what do you want? I said, do you prefer to be here or in the home with your grandchildren? I want to go back to the grandchildren. And this is punishment. You being punished. He said that women would be dressed and yet be naked. When last have you been to KLCC? Huh? When women are dressed, oh oh, sorry, before that, I missed out one. But they're going to be angry with me now, eh? These fellas on this side. But never mind, we'll be friends after the lecture is over. He said, men will dress like women. 1400 years ago he said that. Why would a man, would a man dress like woman? Why? Because he wants to assume the functional role of woman. You see? So when the two of them get married, the two men, one will be the dominant partner and the other would be the woman. Hmm. If a man wants to dress as a woman, what is the first thing he has to do? I wish I had the time to wait for answers, but I don't have the time. Remember, don't be angry with me, I have a job to do. If a man wants to dress as a woman, the first thing he has to do is to shave off his beard. It is not my accident that every civilization in human history had the beard until the sun rose from the west and modern secular western civilization shaved off the bed and guess what the rest of men in the world did hmm? so if he wants to marry you tell him put on his bed first <laughs> grow your bed first otherwise no marriage now then he said that women would be dressed and yet be naked this is dynamite yes this is going to cause explosions why because a woman is attractive you know when Allah's messenger built the masjid you know he put the men at the front and you know he put the women at the back you know that of course and you know he said that when women go down in sijda they must remain in sijda longer than the men you know that no nobody ever told you yes when women go down in sijda in salat they must remain in sijda longer than the men this is a command of the prophet why? He said some of the men may not have enough cloth to cover themselves. And if a woman were to raise her head too quickly, it would be an unwelcome sight. So he put the men at the front and the woman at the back and told the woman to remain longer in Sajda. Why did he not put the woman in the front and the men at the back? Answer? No man would be able to pray. <laughs> no. You can't concentrate on prayer. Well, you have women in front of you. Because women are beautiful. Women are desirable. And if there's a man who does not have desire for women, something is wrong with him. Give him a one-way ticket to the moon. So when women start to take off their clothing, you're heading for trouble. Yes. And he said women will be dressed and yet be naked. You're playing with fire. And he said the fire is going to come. Why? He said that eventually, I don't think it has come to Malaysia as yet but it's already come to London and Paris and Japan and some. He said you'll find people having sexual relations in public 
like donkeys like donkeys and this sexual revolution is provoked by a feminist revolution which takes woman and gets her to take off her clothing hmm? I could go on for another one hour or more giving you sign after sign of what he spoke about the last age but I think I want to now conclude by suggesting to you how can we survive in this modern age with faith intact when you have studied the subject then you can argue with me yes but when you not studied the subject don't argue with me now having studied the subject and I am today by Allah's kindness and grace one of the people in the world of Islam who is teaching the subject of Islamic eschatology having studied the subject I have come to the conclusion that you cannot escape shirk you call it shirk while living in society and this is the one sin that Allah will not forgive no. you cannot escape riba while living in the modern world no and Allah declares war in the Quran and the Prophet has cursed all four and he said that they are all equally guilty the one who takes riba the one who gives riba the one who records the transaction and the two witnesses they are all equally guilty and if you have the curse of the Prophet upon you you are entering into the hellfire I have come to the conclusion after studying the subject of riba and incidentally there is a flyer at the back for a conference taking place in KLC, in um, PWTC on July 26 and 27 that you might want to attend I am one of the speakers on riba responding to riba I have come to the conclusion that you cannot survive with faith intact while living as a part of this system and therefore I have been suggesting that we retreat to the remote countryside and we build micro communities which are free from oppression so you're not going to employ an Indonesian maid Um, she is the last to sleep at night she is my daughter she is your daughter she is my sister she is your sister she is the last to sleep at night she is the first to wake in the morning she works all day long she gets no holidays she is abused she is exploited in Singapore she has to cook pork lahmul khinzir she has to do other things we can't talk about and at the end of the month she's paid the salary or the wage of a slave come on Lee Kuan Yew is there any Singaporean woman who would work for three hundred dollars a month shame on you Singapore shame on you wherever in the world you pay a maid the wage of a slave how do you know it's the wage of a slave no Malaysian woman will work for that wage no Malaysian laborer will work for that wage that you're paying the Bangladeshi and you're paying the Indonesian so you are an oppressor and Allah will destroy you, Allah will destroy you, Allah will destroy you. So we will create our 
micro communities which would be free from oppression. Banks are not allowed. No. So no money lenders. And we're not going to use this paper money. The gold dinar and silver dirham is what you find in the Quran. So the gold dinar and silver dirham will be used as money. And if we have a shortage of dinars and dirhams, and we in Java, we can use rice as money. Yeah. In that micro community, we try to live the way of life of Islam. And if they come after us with the armed forces and the police in that remote community, then said the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam and how prophetic were his words and how few they are who listen to the Prophet and he said the time will come when a man in order to preserve his faith would have to flee to the mountain sides where rain falls and take with him some sheep and goats and so I leave you now I thank you for the time that you've given to me to introduce you to this important topic I warn you that we now live in the most dangerous of all worlds and most people are going to fail the tests and I urge you to study the subject of signs of the last day and to examine my suggestion that survival requires us to try to live Islam and we cannot live Islam in their cities and towns but we might succeed if we remove ourselves from the towns and cities and go back to Kampung and build a community that is faithful to Allah and His Messenger. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samir alim wa tawa alayna ya mawlana innaka anta tawab rahim bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Ameen. I saw my teacher, Mawlana Dr. Fadl Rahman Ansari, conducting a class. And while the class was being conducted, the azan was called. Of course, we'll be going to the masjid. When the azan started, I, I heard him say, Allahumma jalla jalalahu, and then continue with the class. Hmm? So I followed his way. If anyone can show me that this is prohibited, then of course I will discontinue it. Hmm. Okay, there's nothing that I know of in the Quran and nothing that I knew of in the Ahadith would wish to respond to your question. I therefore will give you my view. I believe that those who are in control of the world today, who want to rule the whole world and eventually deliver that rule to the state of Israel, so that tomorrow Israel will rule the world and when Israel rules the world then a man would stand up in Jerusalem and declare I am the Messiah Al Masih 1400 years ago Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam described that man to us said he'll be a Jew he would be a young man He'll be powerfully built. He'd have curly hair. Hmm? Uh, I believe that that event is probably about 30 years away from now. That's how close we are. That man would be Dajjal. Dajjal. Because he says he is the Messiah. But no, he's not the Messiah. He is the false Messiah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send back the true Messiah. Nabi Isa alayhi will come down 
from the sky with his hands resting on the wings of two angels and the true messiah will then kill the false messiah and after that takes place the big Gog and Magog war which will be the Dukhan but in order for Israel to rule the world Israel has to wage some big wars the wars that Israel has so far waged are small wars Israel has to attack Egypt so that the territory of the state of Israel can expand to incorporate the whole of the eastern delta of Egypt from the river Nile to the river to the Red Sea Israel has to destroy Pakistan's nuclear plants and nuclear weapons and Iran's nuclear plants hmm? break up Pakistan so that Pakistan can never rise again Israel in order to wage those wars and not appear to the world as an aggressor is now maneuvering with the Arab uprisings and the Arab uprisings are meant to lead to Islamic governments in Egypt Islamic governments in Yemen in Syria so that Israel can claim that the Arabs are now threatening Israel preparing to destroy Israel and that Islam is rising as a menace to the world and then Israel will be able to wage her wars and say we were only defending ourselves and we were saving mankind from Islam it is possible that all of the drum beating concerning 2012 is because they want to use 2012 for starting those big wars so that in 2012 I can be wrong of course in 2012 you'll, you will witness the attack on Pakistan to destroy the nuclear plants and nuclear weapons I'll be surprised if it does not take place by 2012 mm -hmm. and uh, the attack on Egypt etc because mankind is being prepared for it so let's not disappoint them there is a hadith which has been universally accepted all through our 1400 years of our history there's only be a very 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 insignificant number of scholars who have questioned this hadith the overwhelming majority for 1400 years have accepted the hadith that when you see the black flags coming from the direction of Khorasan go and join that army even if you have to crawl over ice it's two hadiths I'm joining now two go and join that army even if you have to crawl over ice because no one will be able to stop that army until it reaches Jerusalem hmm? Um, apart from my comment concerning the authenticity of the hadith and that is that it has been universally accepted except by a very few it appears to me that this uh, army will be able to successfully march to Jerusalem only after Gog and Magog have destroyed themselves with that nuclear warfare when that nuclear warfare takes place uh, if we have any scholars of physics and so on here you can help me but I have a suspicion I'm not a scholar of physics
I have a suspicion that the radiation in the atmosphere which we now have to these towers so you can use your cellular phone and, so on, and your laptop wireless that the radiation <coughs> that is now in every town and every city will function as an agent when the nuclear explosions take place would function as a conductor to incinerate everybody this is a hypothesis I want a specialist to examine this hypothesis because I want to get out of range of that I want to get out of range of that radiation hmm? the the army would march after that Gog and Magog war takes place and since you will not be able to use any cruise missiles and electronic weapons <laughs> it's going to be horses once again um, I expect that army to march in about 30 years from now but it's already begun its march because it's fighting back in Afghanistan Khorasan the heart of Khorasan is Afghanistan but let me make one more comment the Prophet said to Islam that among the signs of the last day is that listen carefully one man would have to maintain 50 women please tell them he didn't say one man will have to marry 50 women <laughs> no one man will have to maintain 50 women 1400 years ago he said that and I believe that is around the corner the fulfillment of this hadith is around the corner I believe that this hadith is telling us that there is going to be a calamitous decline in the birth of baby boys only baby girls are going to be born rare would be the birth of a baby boy why? why? the medical doctors have explained to me that the sperm has male chromosomes and female chromosomes and when the male chromosome fertilizes the egg then a boy baby boy is born but when the male chromosome does not fertilize the egg then the default is a baby girl the radiation from cellular phone towers from laptop computers the radiation he said is damaging notice where the laptop sits on your lap it is damaging male sperm production it is weakening the male chromosome as the male chromosome becomes weaker and weaker less and less baby boys are going to be born so now every woman in the world you can ask them wants to have a baby boy yeah the only place you can get a husband who can give you a baby boy is our village because when our baby boys are born in our village our baby boys are kept away from that radiation our baby boys are fed with natural food not GM food so the baby boy who grows up in the village is the prize that every woman in the world will want to have as a husband Okay.